Praise the Lord. Rise up as we pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. We bless your name. We thank you because there is Congress that you have led and you have organized yourself and you have brought your children, your ministers, your servants, the preachers of the gospel all over this land, this country and this, uh, this um, continent of Africa. Lord, we thank you for everything that you have done. And Lord, we pray everyone who has contributed to the success of this Congress, Lord, showers us from on high. Anointing upon their lives Glory in their families I pray Lord All their prayers you will answer In Jesus name And even the things they need Which they didn't remember To present to you For themselves, for their husbands, for their wives For their children, for their profession Any area of their lives Bless abundantly in Jesus name Lord you have strengthened us you have empowered us. You have energized us. You have encouraged us. And Lord, we pray the strength we have received from the beginning of this year, it will carry us through. We will not be weak. We will not fall. We will not, we will not be wasted in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, these verses remaining from Acts chapter 26. You want to open to us Lord I pray You will inject us once again Power into our lives Fire in our spirit And Lord I pray Your people will never be the same again Every local church Will taste the power The touch of the Lord And Lord we pray Every minister that has listened That has been here Will never be the same again Smile upon us in Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. We come to the final message of this Congress. And this message is titled, Pressing on toward the mark. Pressing on toward the mark. As you look at the last three verses of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26, and we're reading from verses 30, 31, and 32. You wonder, what does God have for us in those three concluding verses? Let's read together. It says in Acts 26, verse 30. And when he had thus spoken, that is, when Paul the apostle had thus replied and reacted, responded, to what King Agrippa said, and he had said, I would to God that not only thou, King Agrippa, and not only thou, Festus the governor, and all the other people here, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and all together such as I am, except these bounds. And when he had thus spoken, the king grows up, and the governor, and be nice, and they that search with them. And when they were gone aside, they talked between themselves, saying, This man doeth nothing worthy of death or of bonds. Then said Agrippa to Festus, this man might have been set at liberty if he had not appealed unto Caesar. From those words, from those verses, we're finding out what it means to press on, press on, press on toward the mark. There is a pressing on. Actually, when you come into the kingdom, the challenges are so great that you really have to press on and you press in. In Luke chapter 16, verse 16, Luke chapter 16, verse 16, the law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached and every man presses into it. To even enter the kingdom. Because of all the challenges around us. 
and because of all the resistance that we face we need to press in and press on the mark at that time is the mark of a glorious salvation and we see that salvation and we see that glory and we see that forgiveness and we see that reconciliation with God and then something wants to come between us and that salvation and we see the glories of the kingdom of God and we press on and we press in that's how we got into the kingdom and then as we're living the Christian life as a pilgrim as a child of God and many many things will like to make you draw back you realize every day I must press on and press on and press on and then God calls you after he's called you into salvation and into sanctification he calls you into service and then you realize that all the things that are pulling you back you need to do something and resist everything and you're pressing on and pressing on and pressing on and then after you've done some work for the Lord that the enemy or the devil or the world might be saying that's enough that is enough you've done enough if other people will do just what you have done then the whole land will be covered then you realize that is a voice coming from the opposite direction and once again you press on and press in we're looking at philippians chapter 3 Philippians chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 13 to verse 14. Brethren, I count not myself to have appeared, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I do what? I press toward the mark. For the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, pressing on toward that mark of the high calling. As we look at these concluding verses, and as we pick up this last message of this Congress at this time, I'm going to divide the message to three parts. Number one, progressing according to the divine plan and purpose progressing according to the divine plan and purpose the beauty of the life of paul the apostle the beauty of the service and the sacrifice of paul the apostle and the glory of what we see in the progress that he made going from one place to the other and even when appearing before this governor and before this king and the things they did and the things they said and the next place he got to we can see that it was something marked out by the lord himself the progress that he made according to the divine plan and purpose number two preservation in the divine pattern of purity through it all in it all the things that happened to him could make a man bitter could make a man feel what kind of world is this it could make a person feel that these jewish people they are pregnant with evil and they have in their veins the blood of hatred and animosity and what he went through, he could have become unrighteous, sinful, selfish, self-centered, and impure. But you're going to find out that in everything Paul the Apostle went through, there was the preservation in the divine pattern of purity. And then, point number three, pressing on as a divinely prepared proof producer. Proof producer. Proof producer. He produced fruit. And it was the proof that the hand of the Lord was upon him. The power of the Lord was walking with him. And the word he preached. And the word he shared with other people. He had the benefit. And the effectual working of that word himself. And as we're pressing on. We're going to be divinely prepared to become proof producers. Everywhere you go, you'll prove it. That something has come in your heart and in your life. 
and there will be the power of the Lord working in your life and in your ministry in Jesus' name. We're looking at number one, progressing according to the divine pattern and purpose. Let's look at verse 30 again. You have thought, after he made such a clear proclamation of his case, and after he said everything he said, and he even tried to have a bunch of affection with Agrippa. And then he said, King Agrippa, he became personal, affectionate, passionate, loving. And it appears between Paul and then Agrippa, it's almost like they were becoming friends. And they forgot their position. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know thou believest. And then he said, and then he said, Paul. Almost that persuades me to be a Christian. You'll think that because of that bunch of love, affection, what he should have done now is to release him and say, don't mind all those Jews. Don't mind what they say. And don't mind their ignorance. We know that you're all right. We'll release you. But no, they didn't release him. Then you're wondering. And because they did not release him, that took him to the next place and the next place and the next place. And when you check up what happened, you'll find out that the progress he made and the places he got to, just because of that decision, it was according to the divine plan and purpose. Let me show you. I'm looking at Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. We're looking at verse 15. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles. That's what he's been doing. And before kings and the children of Israel. I want you to understand the outline here. Number one, to the Gentiles. Number two, to kings. And the greatest of the kings of the land at that time, Caesar, he had not met Caesar. And the Lord said, in the plan I have for you, in the purpose of your calling, and the reason why you are chosen as a chosen vessel, is that you'll get to the Gentiles, you will get to the kings, and you'll get also to the children of Israel. And so, that's why the didn't release him, he must still appear before Caesar. Before that, because that's part of the plan and that's part of the purpose the things that happen to us and we're wondering why should it happen like that why shouldn't this man release me now and why with all the things I proved and I said very clearly why didn't he just say we know your case you don't have any case to answer you're free no, he must still appear before the kings And then he must appear before the children of Israel Chapter 19, chapter 19 of Acts I'm reading verses 20 and 21 Chapter 19, verse 20 So mightily grew the word of God And prevailed after these things were ended Paul purposed in his spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem saying after I have been there I must also see where Rome and he wasn't there yet he was still to get to Rome he said I know the plan and I know the strategy and I know the places I still need to get to and one of them the chief city of the gentile world where the king caesar was i must still also see rome if agrippa had released him at that point where we're reading now how will he get to rome how would he see caesar how will all the plan that god had for him how will that be fulfilled i'm looking at chapter 23 chapter 23 of acts verse 11 23 verse 11 and the night following the lord stood by him the lord is with you and the lord will stand by you the lord stood by him and said be of good cheer paul for as thou has testified of me in jerusalem tell me the rest 
so must thou bear witness also at Rome. You see, it wasn't an accident that after all the clear declaration and testimony that Paul the Apostle gave, yet they didn't really see him. Because the Lord said, you must. He himself said, I must see Rome. God Almighty said, share of Paul the Apostle, as you have testified of me in Jerusalem, you must be at Rome. I'm looking at chapter 25 of Acts. Acts chapter 25, and I'm reading from verse 10. Then said Paul, I stand at Caesar's judgment seat i'm making programs i'm getting nearer the lord told me from chapter 9 i must see the kings i must testify to the kings and the greatest of those kings have not got into him yet and i'm moving on and the lord told him reassured him in chapter 19 reassured him in chapter 23 and he said the more you get on in acts of the apostles you are getting nearer and nearer and nearer to rome and so he said I must still be there. That's why he said, I stand at Caesar's judgment seat where I ought to be judged. And then in verse 12, so Festus, when he had conferred with the council, answered, As thou appealed unto Caesar, unto Caesar thou shalt go. Not an accident, not an accident. That's according to the divine plan. And according to the divine purpose, chapter 27, Acts chapter 27, I'm reading from verse 22, Acts 27, verse 22, and now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you and but of the sheep, for there stood by me this night the angel of God whose I am and whom I serve saying fear not Paul what's next thou must be brought before Caesar heaven knew that heaven wrote that heaven sent that message to him the angel came and said Paul I'm sure you are not confused and Paul said no I'm sure that you are not discouraged. Paul said no. I'm sure you know there is a purpose to this. Why Agrippa and Festus did not release you? Yes, I understand. Because there is a plan for your life. There is a purpose for your life. And the climax of your ministry. To be able to witness in Caesar's palace that climax has not taken place and you're moving on and moving on and moving on and you must be there my brothers and sisters when some things happen and then you wonder why this why that why me and why should this happen and and, and, and the way i spoke to agrippa and festus i just thought that they'll be so convinced and the way Agrippa even replied me and it was like we're almost in affection together almost like friends he forgot he was a prince and he forgot I was a prisoner and then I thought he'll release me but he will not release you because you must still be in Rome and you must still appear before Caesar progressing according to the divine plan and the divine purpose that's the divine plan in your life a divine purpose upon your life everything that happens to you will move you towards that plan and towards that purpose and when you eventually reach there you look back and say thank you jesus thank you lord i didn't see your hand i didn't see the writing on the rising when you are leading but now i know now i see that i am a chosen vessel are you a chosen vessel and you'll bear the name of the lord to the place is taking you to i'm telling you by the word of the lord you will get there yeah. point number two preservation in the divine pattern of purity preservation in the divine pattern of purity acts chapter 26 we're reading from verse 31 and when they were gone aside they talked between themselves saying this man doeth nothing worthy of death or bonds. 
This man doeth nothing. We find no fault in him. This man is not guilty. This man is morally upright. This man is righteous. We find no fault at all in him. This man doeth nothing. Worthy of all this. Isn't that the pattern of purity that Jesus Christ laid down? Do you remember John chapter 18? John chapter 18. And I'm reading from verse 38. John chapter 18, verse 38. Pilate says unto him, What is the truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews. And he said, I find in him no fault at all. That's the divine pattern of purity. That Jesus Christ had laid down. And then this Paul the Apostle, in all his trial, in all his temptation, in all his persecution, in all that imprisonment, he kept to that pattern of purity. That even Agrippa and Festus, they said the same thing about Paul that Pilate had said about Christ. We find nothing in this man worthy of any punishment. Chapter 19 of John. John chapter 19, verse 4. Pilate therefore went forth again and said unto them, Behold, I bring him forth unto you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. The Lord Jesus Christ had left us a pattern of purity, a pattern of righteousness, a pattern of perfection. And then as these people, like this King Pilate, like he said, concerning this Lord Jesus Christ, he said, I bring him to you. I want to expose him and show him to you. I've questioned him, examined him thoroughly, and I want to assure you, I find no fault in this man. I want a glorious and a beautiful thing when the Lord will say, and when the people of the world will say, the people you interact with, and they will say, like they say, about Christ, like they said about Paul, I find no fault in him. Is that possible? That the power of the Lord, the strength of the Lord, the grace of God, and the cleansing of the blood of the Lamb will so work within us and will so work and touch our lives and transform us and turn us around that the people that know us intimately, they will say, I find no fault in this man, look at verse 6. When the chief priest, therefore, and the officer saw him, they cried out. And what did they cry? Crucify him, crucify him. And Pilate said unto them, Take ye him and crucify him. Take ye him and crucify him. For I find no fault in him. Do you see contradiction there on the surface? Ordinarily, you see contradiction. I find no fault in him, but take him and crucify him. I find no fault in him. He has a perfect life, a pure life, a righteous life, a holy life, an irreproachable life. All the same, take him and crucify him. Any con contradiction? Yes, it's when you find somebody guilty. That you'll take him and punish him. It's when you find somebody sinful. When somebody has gone against the law of God, the law of the land, and the law in the society, you say, this man is guilty. This man is sinful. Take him and crucify him. But it says, I find no fault in him, but all the same, take him and crucify him. Now, on the surface, there's contradiction. But in the scriptures, there's no contradiction because the sacrifice must be a sacrifice without blemish, without sin. The very fact that there was no fault in him, the very fact that there was no sin in him, the very fact there was no blemish in him, qualifies him to be the Paschal Lamb. No fault. No blemish, no sin, no spot. Because of that perfection, that's exactly why he was qualified to be crucified and to die for you and for me. And so what you see as contradiction, ordinarily, when you come to the study 
of the intention of God and the plan of God and the purpose of God, there's no contradiction at all. Do you see Paul the Apostle? We find no fault in him. This man has done nothing worthy of death. All the same, they left him bound. The punishment and the persecution was still there. Why? That's according to divine plan and purpose. Acts of the Apostles chapter 9. Acts of the Apostles chapter 9. And you'll see this in verse 16. In verse 16 chapter 9. For I will show him how great things he must suffer. For my name's sake, no contradiction there. He had no sin, no fault, no blemish, and all the same. The persecution was still there. But you understand what we're saying? That he still maintained and he still preserved the divine pattern of purity. Even though those problems were there. We're looking at John, talking about Christ. John chapter 14. Bastachi. John chapter 14 verse 30 Hereafter I will not talk much with you For the prince of this world cometh And has nothing in me uh, that, That's exactly what uh, uh, the pilot uh, found out No fault in him The prince of this world comes And yet he finds no fault in me And Agrippa, the prince, one of the princes of this world in the natural, and Festus, they found no fault in Paul the apostle because he was preserved in that divine pattern of purity. In Daniel chapter 6, Daniel chapter 6, and I'm reading to you from verse 4, Daniel chapter 6, verse 4, the same thing that we see in Daniel chapter 6, verse 4. Then the, prince, the presidents and the princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion, no fault for as much as he was faithful. Neither was there any error or fault found in him. Following that, after the same, after the same pattern of Purity, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 24. Acts, chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 16. The life of Paul the Apostle. He was preserved. He was preserved in the pattern of purity. Acts, chapter 24. And we're reading from verse 16. 24, verse 16. Here it says, And herein do I exercise, exercise myself to have always a conscience Voyage of offense toward God and toward men. You see the life he followed, a life of righteousness, a life of holiness, a life of purity. God did it for him, he will do it for us. He has done it for us already. In First Thessalonians chapter 2, First Thessalonians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 10. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. Ye are witnesses, and God also. How holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. You can see that pattern shining forth. That same pattern of purity will shine forth in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Jude verse 24 and verse 25. Jude verse 24 and verse 25. Now unto him. That is able to keep you from falling. As I'm going back home, whatever comes your way, the Lord will keep you from falling. Will keep you from stumbling. And you will stand firm in the righteousness and holiness of the Lord in Jesus' name. We we'll sent Daniel, we we'll sent the Lord Jesus Christ who passes that righteousness unto us. And we we'll sent Paul the Apostle that even the people that examine him, they said, we don't find any fault in this man that is worthy of death or worthy of punishment or worthy of bonds. The same testimony that those people had concerning Paul, they will have concerning you. I said they'll have concerning you. We're told here now unto him. That is able to keep you from falling and to present you 
unto faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and ever yeah. and the people of God said yeah. amen number one progressing will make progress according to the divine plan and purpose number two preservation in the divine pattern of purity now point number three pressing on pressing on pressing on as a divinely prepared proof producer proof producer that means as he went from place to place the lord had divinely prepared him and he produced the fruit the fruit that's the power of the Holy Ghost was upon his life. And as you go, you'll be a pro producer. You'll heal the sick. You'll cast out devils. You'll turn sinners unto righteousness. And you'll, people will know that you have been divinely prepared so that you can bear fruit. You'll be a, a, a pro producer. I'm coming back to Acts chapter 26, verse 32 now. Acts. Chapter 26, verse 32. Then said, I grip unto Festus, this man might have been set at liberty if he had not appealed unto Caesar. Can you blame Agrippa telling Festus what he told him? I can't blame him. He didn't know the secret plan of God. He didn't know the revealed purpose of God. He didn't know that God had told Paul already, you've testified of me in Jerusalem. You must be in Rome. He didn't know that he had been ministering to kings and princes and people. And now the greatest of the king, Caesar, he must appear before that Caesar. And he must have an impact not only in Jerusalem. He must have an impact not only in Antioch. He must have an impact Impact in the very palace of Caesar and that's the reason why but they didn't understand and they will not understand you because the natural man does not understand the things of the spirit but you are a spiritual man now I said the spiritual man now as the wind of the spirit and the power of the spirit and the and the holy ghost himself is moving you and moving you and moving you people will say but why you see like this they won't understand but the supernatural will be walking in your life i said the spiritual will walk in your life and so they said, this man would have been released we're just setting free if he had not appealed unto unto caesar now let's trace that let's see what happened now how the wind of the spirit moved him and he went on and on and on until he got there i will get there i said i will get there as i going back tomorrow and taking step after step you are getting nearer and nearer you will get there and when you get there when you get there power will blow every mountain away in jesus name and the authority of the name of jesus will walk in your mouth you will know no impossibility no mountain will stand before you and all the hardened hearts like the hammer the hammer of the world will break those hardened hearts in jesus name you have a crusade you are going to see miracles you have retreat you are going to see miracle and you're going to see people rushing to the lord asking you questions sir sister what should i do to be saved and you will lead people to genuine salvation in jesus name now unto caesar he must get to unto caesar he must get to acts chapter 27 again acts chapter 27 i'm reading from verse 23 for there stood by me this night the angel of god whose i am and whom i serve saying fear not paul thou must be brought before caesar and lo god has given thee all them that sail with thee and then chapter 28 we're moving on now chapter 28 verse 1 and when they were escaped then they knew that the island was called Melita and the barbarous people showed us no little kindness but they kindled a fire 
and received us everyone because of the present rain and because of the cold and when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand there came what what's the what's other name for that a snake and fasting where on his hand i'm going to ask you a question now i'm sure now you understand now you understand now you understand did paul think that that snake could poison him and kill him why not because must get to caesar because he must get to caesar the things that happen that you think ah this one has come i am finished you will never be finished yeah. whatever whatever is happening between here and the time you get to that caesar i'm telling you all those things uh, just yank them off into the fire yeah. they will not touch your life in jesus name yeah. the devil knows all those serpentine spirits they know all those demonic powers they know we have a destiny and we have a place we're going and until we get there nothing will touch your life and so the snake the viper held on his hand and he said you what are you doing here you want to play any trick on me you, you don't know that I'm, where i'm going my destiny is not melita what's your destiny to that place to roam and because i must get there that's why i just flung the thing and it went into the fire if you always remember the purpose of god for your life the plan of god for your life and the destiny and the place where god is taking you to anything that happens between here and uh, where you are getting to you just throw it off it will never have any effect over your life and in verse 4 and when the barbarian saw the venomous beast hang on his hand they said among themselves no doubt this man is what a murderer whom though he has escaped the sea yet vengeance suffereth not to live you know whatever happens to us they will misinterpret the judge team i went uh, you see all the judgment that the people are passing uh, king agrippa said this man has done nothing worthy of death or bonds and then these barbarians i'm telling you when a barbarian says something about you just say well, a barbarian blah 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 what can you say barbarian blah 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 and so and sometimes you know, that's what bothers us a barbarian says now you are guilty but your sins are forgiven but he doesn't know and you are justified by faith in christ and he doesn't know and there's the joy of salvation reconciliation in your heart and he doesn't know and these bar -bar -bar people the barbarians then they say but you are then you just laugh it off just like we said the other time when a man was spiritual dullness criticizes you the val that criticism doesn't have any value the value you put on that criticism is the value of the spiritually dull man himself and the value you put on what the barbarians said is the value of the barbarians themselves but look at it now whom they said though he has escaped the sea yet vengeance suffereth not to live and, and he shook off the beast into the fire and he felt no harm you all feel no harm how be it they looked when he should have swollen and fallen down dead suddenly but after they had looked a great while they will look a great while they will not see you sick they will not see you oppressed they will not see you downcast they will not see you discouraged they will not see you defeated they will look and look and look you'll be going higher and higher in jesus name then they changed their minds they will change their mind i said they will change their mind and they said that he was a god in the same quarters 
were, poss were possessions. What possessions of the chief man of the island, whose name is Publius, who, he, who received us and lodged us three days courteously. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. He was a pro producer, pro producer. He produced the proof. That he was a man of God. You'll produce that fruit. And when people are sick around you, you'll be a pro producer. And then you lay your hands on them, they'll be well. So when this was done, others also, which, which had diseases in the island, came and they were healed. Pro producer, pro producer. He was divinely prepared to be a proof producer we're looking at romans chapter 15 romans chapter 15 i'm reading from verse 17 romans 15 verse 17 i have therefore wherefore i may glory through jesus christ in those things which pertain to god for i will not dare to speak of any of those things which christ has not wrought by me to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed through many signs and wonders. By the power of the Spirit of God. So that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Yea, so have I strived to preach the gospel. Not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. You'll see, as it went on, from where he was until he got to Rome, he was producing the fruit and producing the fruit. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. Truly, the signs of an apostle were wrought among you in all patience in signs and wonders and mighty deeds but where is he going i said where is he going when he gets to rome who will he see there what's the name what will he do when he gets there produce fruit again pro producer and that's where you're going and when you get there you'll produce fruit the power of God will walk through your life. The question is, did he ever get there? Yes, he got there. I said, yes, he got there. I said, yes, he got there. Will I get there? Will you get there? Shall we get there? And when we get there, will the power of God walk through us? Yes. Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 12. Philippians chapter 1 verse 12. But I would you should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me are falling out rather to the furtherance of the gospel. All the things that happened that might confuse an ordinary man, an ordinary woman. Why is all this happening to Paul? Why is all this happening to my brother there, my sister there? I want you to know, brethren, that the things that have happened to me, they have happened for the furtherance of the gospel. Verse 13, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places you see that now chapter 4 chapter 4 of philippians philippians chapter 4 verse 20 now unto god and our father be glory forever and ever amen. that one is 19 what uh, amen. amen praise the lord this 2009 the amen that we have this year must drive every force and every evil, every contrary power. Drive everything away in Jesus' name. <laughs> Verse 21. Salute every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren which are with me greet you. Now you will read Verse 22 yourself out aloud once you go.
that's it, that's it, that's it. It has happened. It has happened. I said it has happened. I said it has happened. What's wrong with your hand? And it will happen. I said it will happen. You know, as we're going, I told you we're going to get there. And when we get there, those unlikely places you never, never knew that people will get saved, they'll be getting saved everywhere. As I see this mighty army of the Lord, army of preachers and evangelists, as you march all over this continent of Africa, in the unlikely places they never knew that salvation will come and that the saints of God will rise up there, there will be saints of God. Because God has a destiny for every one of us. And as you're pressing on and pressing on, you are divinely prepared already as a proof producer in Jesus' name. Before I release you, let me release the power they are not into your life. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. And we're looking at verse 15 downwards. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to who? Every creature. He that is either believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs, I'm wondering why you're sitting down for the sign to follow you. The power of God to be imputed and imparted into your life. The anointing to be transferred and to come into your life and for you to feel the power of heaven, the glory of heaven and for you to be moved and you're moving on and moving on and as you move on, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So after then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth, and they went forth, and you are going forth. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming their word was signs following. And the people of God said, Open your mouth and receive the transfer of power. Divine energy. Divine authority coming upon your life. Because you know you are going somewhere. You are getting there. 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 The Lord is going with you. The power of the Lord is going with you. The spirit of the Lord is going with you. The authority of the name of Christ is going with you. Do you see the plan? Do you see the purpose? Do you see the authority? And you see that every step of the way, the Lord was leading and guiding Paul the Apostle. And nothing happened by accident. Cancel that word from your mouth. It happened to me accidentally. It happened accidentally. I got into this. I got into this. No more accident. This is the will of the Lord. And this is the plan of the Lord. And this is the purpose of the Lord. And you are getting there. And you are getting there. No doubt in your mind, no believe in your heart. The faith that must mountain. And the faith that gets seen and saved. And the faith that rolls away all the problems in the lives of the people. That's where the Lord is taking you to. And the Lord is saying, you are going there. You are going there. You are going there. Power from on high coming upon your life. Authority coming upon your life. And the Lord is going with you. The partnership that the Lord has with you. The Holy Ghost going along with you. And great signs and wonders will take place. And the Lord went with them. And the Lord went with them. And the Lord went with them. And they preached everywhere. And it says the Lord confirmed their word with signs following. This is your day. And this is your time. The hour of his power. 
the hour of his power the hour of his power coming upon your life and you're telling the Lord, oh Lord I know I'm going there I know I'm going there and until I get there whatever happens between here and there I know it will never hurt my life you're getting there you're getting there you're getting there power from on high authority from on high touching your life you open your mouth you speak it will be confirmed you will cast out devils you will heal the sick you will turn many unto righteousness you bring salvation to unlikely places it will happen it will happen because god has a plan for your life he purpose for your life agrippa didn't know what he said first thought he didn't understand why they couldn't release paul you go with peace you go with purity you go with righteousness you go with holiness you go with sanctification you go with anointing you go with unction you go with the spirit's power it's upon your life already it's upon your life already you'll tread on serpents and scorpions and no evil power will be able to hurt your life and anywhere you go everywhere you go when you speak like this power will flash out and be manifested through your life you're going to reign you're going to have dominion because the power of the almighty will work without any restraint without any restriction in your life this is the day and this is the era and this is the time you are the man you are the woman that the lord has chosen for this hour in your place where you are and the wind of the spirit will be carrying you on you sail over the storm you pass through over the difficult places and when you get amidst those barbarians you will convince them of the literal real power of the almighty god and then when eventually you get to caesar's household caesar's household you'll plant a church there you'll do exploits there salvation holiness will spread throughout the land through you yes through you yes through you accept it receive it believe it never question anymore never question anymore why me why this why did it agree to release me seeing that i have no case to answer no question anymore we're moving somewhere we're getting somewhere and until you get there there is no release from the army thank the lord praise the lord authority comes into your life power comes into your life impossibilities become impossible mountains moving out of your sight are you going in the power of the spirit of god this is the day this is the hour the hour of his power the hour of his power the hour of his power you are the man you are the man you are the woman you are the brother you are the sister the hand of the lord is upon you you will not be tired you will not be weak you will not be weary you will stand you will not fall this is not the year of weakness this is not the year of fear this is not the year of defeat the hour of his power the hour of his power the hour of his power and that power is upon you now that power is upon you now that power is upon you now it will begin to move you begin to shake you it will begin to lead you everywhere you'll never be the same you will never be the same you trample all those beasts of the forest of the field great power great anointing 
will walk in your life. In Jesus' name we pray. People of God, soldiers of the cross, the army of the living God, in Jesus' name we pray. Children of God who are more than conquerors. And the power of God is upon your life. And the spirit of God is moving and living big in you. And the mighty one will carry you through everywhere we go. In Jesus' name we pray. You will climb the mountains. You will cross the rivers. You will preach the gospel. The lost will be saved. Believers will be sanctified. When you open your mouth, the power of the Holy Ghost will transform the lives of people. In Jesus' name we pray. All your needs are going to be supplied. You will never lack. The Almighty God will supply all your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Needs for the ministry, needs for the church, needs for your family, and needs for your personal life. The Lord will su supply in Jesus' name. You will carry victory everywhere you go. You will carry success everywhere you go. And this success and victory will flow to your children. Will flow to your converts. Will flow to all our churches. You will never be the same again in Jesus' name. The fire, the fire of the Holy Ghost will burn every chaff out of your life. Every weakness out of your life. And then when you go shouting and singing and talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, all those hardened sinners, they'll be melted down. Power, 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 authority everywhere you go. On the road, miracle. In the village, miracle. In the city, miracle. And then when you get to the church, the next time you stand and you declare the word of God, well, something happened to our pastor. Something happened to our pastor. And that power will change many lives in Jesus' name. Raise up your hand to the Lord and touch that power. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, because we're people of purpose. We're people of power. We're people of praise. And we're people of destiny. You are sending forth your people. Oh, Lord, I pray everyone will go in your power. Everyone will go with the anointing. Everyone will go with the authority. That Lord, from now on, will not just be ordinary people, will be extraordinary people. We will do exploits in the name of the Lord, in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray, everywhere your people go, in Nigeria, in Africa, all over, beyond Africa, I pray, power will walk through them. Authority will walk through them. And the anointing that breaks the yoke will be an abiding anointing in Jesus' name. Revival has come. Transformation has come. The day, the hour of your power has come upon your people in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray you confirm it in every life. Confirm each in every life. Lord, confirm each in every life. As your people go tomorrow, I cover everyone with the blood of Jesus. Protection upon everyone. No accident, no mishap, nothing negative. We'll hear good, good stories about everybody in Jesus' name. Go in power. Go in strength. Go in authority. You'll be an achiever.